What's going on guys, my name is Embrace the Pace, and today we are going to be going over my top 5 favorite prospects in this year's NBA draft that will most likely be available outside of the top 10. These are guys I really like a lot, and their stock isn't extremely high, but they're definitely worth keeping an eye on. So, I hope you guys enjoy the video, let's go ahead and jump into it. So my favorite prospect in this year's draft that will most likely be available outside of the top 10 is OG Ananobi from Indiana. Now, if you guys watched my top 10 mock draft that I just recently posted, if you haven't yet, I highly recommend you go do that. I actually had him slotted at number 10 to the Kings. That's what I would do if I were the Kings. I would pick up OG Ananobi. Now, I don't think that's actually going to happen. His range right now is more in the 15 to 25 range. I think he'll probably fall in there somewhere. And I think that's a very good value pick for somebody because once you get out of that very top part of the draft where you've got those hyper elite prospects, you're looking for translatable NBA skills. And OG Ananobi's translatable NBA skill is his defense and his physical profile. He's about 6'8 with a 7'2 to 7'3 wingspan. He's got a chiseled frame. He's a very, very good defender. He's a motivated defender. He has the physical tools to be an elite defender and he's got good technique he's overall just a really good defender he's not great on offense but when you're like i said when you get out of that top part of the draft you're looking for translatable nba skills and i think from day one in the nba he could be a lockdown defender so that's what i would do if i were the kings at number 10 i don't think it'll happen but any team that picks up og Ananobi. I think will most likely end up being very happy because they're going to have a defensive specialist that's going to be able to step in and guard some of the best players in the NBA. Now next up I have John Collins from Wake Forest and he's currently projected as kind of a late lottery pick. I don't think he'll fall any further than 20 um, but he's right around that range and if you guys know me I'm a big ACC fan because I'm a huge UVA fan so I watch so much ACC basketball that I watched a ton of John Collins this year at Wake Forest and he really kind of jumped onto the scene this year his first year he didn't really do much this year he was an all ACC caliber player and I really like him at the NBA level as well now I don't think he'll end up being a superstar but I think he could possibly be a starting power forward and I think his floor is just a very good energy big man he's got an extremely high motor um, he's got offensive skills he can score close to the basket he can score back to the basket he can shoot some mid-range jumpers he's even been trying to extend his range to the point where he's gonna possibly end up being able to hit some NBA threes in time he doesn't have a very great wingspan he's not completely huge so he's not a huge presence on the defensive side of the ball but he's an energy guy that's gonna go in there he can score he can get rebounds and I think he's a very good pick I'm very very high on John Collins and I think any team that picks him up will be very happy as well next up I have Monte Morris out of Iowa State and currently he's projected as a mid to late second round pick but I think he is an extremely good pickup if you're looking for a backup point guard now he played four years at Iowa State, and during his four years, he showed a lot. He doesn't have a great jump shot, but he has shown that he can score the ball a little bit. I believe his last year at Iowa State, he averaged about 18 points a game, um, so that's definitely pretty solid. But what you're really getting with Monte Morris is a high IQ player that can take care of the ball, and he can set up his teammates. Throughout his Iowa State career, his assist to turnover ratio was always up near the top of the country. He's a great passer, and I think... Overall, he fits perfectly into the role of a good backup point guard. He's about 6'3", he's not extremely strong, but again, if you're looking for a backup point guard who can just take care of the ball and make the right play, Monte Morris is your guy, and I definitely think um, somebody in the second round should scoop him up, and I think he has the potential to be a pretty solid backup point guard in the NBA. Next up, I have another ACC guy, and that is Jerron Blossom Game out of Clemson. Now, he played about five seasons at Clemson. He had a red shirt one year because I think he's broken his leg actually two or three times in his career. Um, but after his junior year at Clemson, he had a phenomenal year that year. He shot, I think, about 40% from three. He entered the draft. He was projected as a late first, early second round pick. 
and then he decided to pull his name out of the draft and return to Clemson for his senior season and unfortunately he didn't have quite as good of a year. He didn't shoot the ball from three as well. He just overall wasn't quite as good. So his draft stock has fallen off quite a bit. And now people project him as a late second round, mid second round type of guy. Some places even have him going undrafted. But I still like him a lot as a prospect. He's 6'7". He's kind of a combo three and four man. He can score in the post a little bit. If he can get his three-point stroke back like he did in his junior season, um, I think he would be a pretty solid pickup. So if I were an NBA team that had a pick later in the second round, I would no doubt take a waiver on Jerome Blossom game and hope he ends up being more like he was in his junior season. Because if he's like that, I think he could definitely be a solid pickup uh, and play a role on an NBA team. And lastly, I have yet another ACC guy, and that is Dwayne Bacon out of FSU. Now, I'm sure a lot of you guys have heard about him because he was a highly rated high school prospect, and he had a really good year at FSU in his first year, but he entered the draft and then pulled his name out and came back for his sophomore year, and he had another really solid season. He scored about 17 points per game, but he shot about 33% on his threes, so he's not an incredible shooter. But the thing with him is that pretty much all he brings to the table is his scoring ability. And his scoring ability is a little bit inconsistent, and you wonder how he's going to translate that to the NBA level. Again, his shooting percentage from outside wasn't extremely good. He was a little bit inconsistent. He had a few games where he looked completely unstoppable. He had a few games where he was pretty much non-existent. But the thing with him is he's got the physical tools. He's 6'5", he's strong, he's got a 6'10 wingspan. I feel like if he really puts his mind to it, he'll be able to play defense. And then that scoring will be just a little bit of an added boost. He's kind of a mid to late second round prospect right now. Um, but I think he has the potential to kind of outplay that draft position. If he sets his mind on defense, plays a role, and uh, he can be kind of like an off the bench firepower type of guy that can come in and get you some points and defend his position. So hopefully he ends up doing that, but I really like Dwayne Bacon a lot. So those are my five favorite players in this year's draft that will most likely be available outside of the top 10. There are definitely others I like as well. I really like Donovan Mitchell. I like Harry Giles. I like Luke Kennard, Caleb Swanigan, Jordan Bell. There are a bunch of guys that I really like, but these in this video were my five favorite that I think you guys should keep an eye on. Make sure to let me know down in the comment section below what are some players that you guys think I should keep an eye on, who are some guys you really like that will most likely be available later on in the draft. Definitely let me know. I'd be very, very interested to hear what you guys have to say. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll talk to you guys later.